OU, Strawbees, and Hummingbird together. Yeah. All right, dive on in. So uh, when I talked about the way I want everything to be easy to change and interchange and slide or move, I tried to invent the same things for our combination of tools. So I show you where tape makes sense. Because most of the time I try to avoid the tape <laughs> and glue because then you get stuck. Tape is sticky in many ways, but, but it's also a fantastic tool for prototyping. So this is where I show if you don't have 3D printers, which some of us like it, have it, we want to utilize this in interesting ways. So that's why I, I developed some tools for that. But all of the things that I show later will be able to be done this way also. So that's why this is more like a library for you to revisit. You tape on the flat strawbies, which is very easy to tape on, as you can see here. That's our strawbie piece number one, uh, the, uh, the original piece. Uh, and you can even slide on the strawbies onto the servos. So I'm showing that too. If you see the servo arms that you have on your robotics, uh, they, it just slides on there. So you can put the strawby on, uh, like the, I used the yellow one in the lower left corner. Uh, and I think these images should explain some of it. And then there are some other construction items you can use to snap into the extension, the, the purple wheel there. What, what did you call it? Uh, sorry for, the, or, or like the. the yeah. We call that um, a, a plastic brick adapter. Plastic brick um, adapter. Yeah, exactly. So you can copyright reasons. Um, it it happens there. to work with Lego Technic pieces. Yeah, and a lot of interesting pieces that I've also developed. So I've sh showed some examples there of how to use it if you want to have mechanical output, which is a really fun way of working with straw strawbies because it can move and bend and, and twist. Can I actually show this thing just to show you Ooh. all the movement? This is my hypnotizer. So you're enjoying this now. <laughs> oh, pops apart. So you see, but this is really fun. But all of that mechanisms are very, very like one close to my heart to try to be able to sketch that because it, this is super, super hard to make with other things. So let's go on to the next slide, which is my new library of 3D printables for the hummingbird. And these will be accessible after the <laughs> after the webinar because I got stuck in Thingiverse. They will be on Thingiverse and they will be called a hummingbird uh, kit. So like that's the piece and then you have all of them in one uh, and then you can pick which one to print. Uh, but basically, where we know that strawbies becomes fastest is when you can actually snap in your both the servos and snap on the servos onto structures and onto cardboard uh, really fast. So that's why I have two uh, snap on servo mounts. And I'm going to show you a bit here, very technical now, how they work instead of video because they're so fresh out of the printer that uh, there's, they haven't been recorded outside of warm. <laughs> actually. So these just slide on to the servo. You see that can, uh, yeah, it should be able to see in, even in the, in the small spotlight there. Very simple. Uh, this one is mechanical output to be able to make automata from your, uh, the, for example, the robot you showed there, um, or oh, the scout or what, what did, did you call it? The one that was the rover. Yeah. So this one is a really good way of hacking the rover, which I will show uh, also here. But uh, each of these should have a description on Thingiverse later, so you, I don't have to go through them uh, now. But basically, it's all to be able to snap on, snap in, slide around, play with balance, and all those things that I, I, I enjoy personally. And I hope everybody else does, and we can see how it works with, with, uh, with our students. So uh, I will show a bit more how they work. Let's go to the next slide here and see. Uh, yeah, you can see some versions of how they snap in. Uh, you can make arms, linkages, movements uh, in quick ways. So basically in all these things, still I have a secret model that I don't want to show that's actually using the things, but I, I'll show it. Should I maybe show it? Nah, no, I'll wait. I'll show you this later. I want so, to see uh, it. <laughs> just, just showing, these are in the slideshow to be able, for everybody to be able to look at and see how are these pieces used. Uh, so there's some snap into servers on the lower left, slide in straws on the, the upper left. Uh, you can also make it an arm for mechanical output, like upper right. But then you can see you can do the same thing with the snaps. And I actually, right now, the snaps are way better. <laughs> so it's because it becomes faster. So but maybe somebody else finds better use for the other ones. So that's why both will stay. These are prototypes. And you're a, a, a 
welcome to test them if you have access to a 3D printer. Our beta testers. We've got 64 beta testers yes, here. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, let's see if I have some other things that I use a lot for be able to combine cardboard with uh, robotics, and especially now both the Hummingbird and, and all Strawbee's robotics you can go to the next one, are uh, some very simple things. Like I call these rails, making holes for your Strawbee's to be able to connect rails to the cardboard structure, which means you don't have to put the expensive stuff stuff stuck on the box so basically you can have lots of these boxes running and the kids can have a project evolving without uh, robotics being stuck there for example so that's why i usually use that but also being able to shift balance once again with rovers and everything uh, it's it's very powerful to be able to just test it so this one is also there for you to have a new uh, alphabet of how to connect to cardboard uh, in a way uh, so that slide is there to hold that. Then also I said something connection points down there is actually for all the sensors and lights we have. So I can just slide in, for example, the ultrasound onto those straw uh, connectors down there. But you will see that. And then all of these are connected on the back side of the cardboard using locks or connection points. So uh, that's, I think, most of the... Yeah, and then we can show you how this is used. If you implement it, this is a base box model. This is how you would snap on your uh, the hummingbird uh, bit and the uh, battery pack if you want to have them in the same th place but then both of those can just slide and vary once again because what you'll see that thing to have that kind of agency over testing what happens if the robot has is uh, has the balance in the back it's easier to go you know there's so many op opportunities for experiences that build their testing loop their iterative uh, creative spiral which we have in all, all our classroom content is you, you have enough small changes that make the classroom immediately wide wall even if they build the same base model uh, yes. which is one of my hopes with this combination there we give them some simple base models and then it's just going to go it's going to go wide but it, all of a sudden it also goes high ceiling which i'll also show in the end <laughs> you yeah, can't definitely happen but it's really hard to go wide without going high too students are yeah. just really but that's when when you realize that that's where engagement has started they they can't really stop the problem is we, we have a way of trying to coordinate this within the 45 minute sessions but basically it would be fun to to extend that because that time when you see somebody in that mode where the, you can see their brain is on fire in a way <laughs> when you're in this 3d space you're building larger you're coming up with the ideas of taking on new challenges that you would never dare to challenge them on if you came up with the idea. But when they're in that zone and in that loop and start building creative confidence, you that that's one of those moments that we want to share as much as possible across the planet. And I think we found a partner for doing this. That's so <laughs> fantastic. But so these slides are here for you to also just see it. Obviously, you can also come up with an infinite amount of ways of doing the same things. But basically knowing that it's really good to put on rails and making holes for connecting that. So I use pencil holes, which is a very standard pencil. <laughs> so pencils are great for making holes if you don't have our special cardboard tools. But that's basically it. Uh, regular pencil is a, a great tool for building with, with strawberries and hummingbird. And then these are examples of combining uh, 3D prints, the cardboard hacks on your on birdbraintechnologies.com, which I love for making all these. So you can see the combo becomes super powerful uh, and you can come into this really in wonderful, highly iterative creative design process. Uh, but let's not talk about it more. It's more like we want to show you some prototypes later because they speak louder than me just <laughs> saying that it happens. Uh, okay. And then I just wanted to show some of the examples when I first tested it. Am mm -hmm. I allowed to? Yeah. Can we show combos? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to then, on this slide or do you want me to keep going? It's coming on the next slide. I think there's two okay. videos there. Uh, you tell the left one first. First prototype okay. of combining like the rover and uh, bird brain and strawberries. It's a weird oh. nodding creature. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with the theme of today. Maybe it has because you could put somebody inside. It you sure know, is playful. Thing, I, I think, yeah. <laughs> happens like that and uh, it just moves around it's a really fun and then i made a development because to show what strawberries is good at it's being able to just let them loose and build it wrong in a way 
to find out something that's really right. And so the, to the right, we have a, a development. This is the Broomba, yeah. a robot that cleans the floor in a not super good way. But the only thing I've done, <laughs> so you can see it's the rover code. It's just slightly random. Uh, so you're actually discovering how a Roomba would work, for example, or any vacuum robot, but I put a broom on him. Uh, but it's also evolved already. So now it has a whistling mouth, basically putting a... <laughs> <laughs> so those are the ways that I we find that kids in with that process together as a teacher when you build your creative confidence you can really like nudge together with them solve things come up with new uh, problems to solve and and this is just from the first uh, session and that's why I showed the base model there that I showed in the slides this is the the core of that and uh, if you take the next slide this is for everybody to be able to see Keep going. Uh, go on here. So strawberries are all color coded. And the reason I put this slide here is for everybody based on this, you can just challenge people to build this in a summer camp, some school, whatever you're doing, any creative thing, because based on this image alone, you should be able to create it because there is no, <laughs> there's nothing hiding the stuff inside. You see almost everything. And if you look at the colors, you see the three legs strawberry is green. You see the single leg strawberry is blue. You can see the five leg strawberries are red. Uh, there's yellow ones in there too. And then we have all of them. Uh, and if you're interested in maths, you can see that we have the two number series and no four leg strawberry. And that's to avoid <laughs> false positives, building squares that are strong. Uh, which I try to avoid, but also we have the Fibonacci and the prime numbers there. So I didn't want to ruin that. Uh, <laughs> but and then you can also see it like a highlight of how to connect uh, the, 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 I just lost the ultrasound sensor there, one example. But this is for you. So everybody has been in the webinar. If you look at this, if you have access to both technologies and a 3D printer or the taped versions, because they all work the same way, uh, then you can build this. Uh, and just experiment with getting the movement of it, of the robot's arms right because it's a very simple construction it doesn't look like it it looks like it's high ceiling but it's just scaffolded up scaffolded up uh, and yeah, it's, it looks so impressive yeah and you see the movement that's the thing so by shifting the linkage lengths it becomes no no if two kids built the exact same robot built on this it will be different yeah and then they can look at them and compare uh, why is this one moving like this and this not? And they can just go into that loop of trying to understand it, changing it for themselves instead of somebody having to explain, because that's really hard because mechanisms are not that intuitive in the beginning. But with this, you can't break anything. It just bends or pops off. So go ahead and go crazy with building. So yes, the, I think that's enough for showing how we combine it. Uh, any questions? <laughs> We've had some questions in the yeah. chat and I they are they are questions that um, I want to get to at the end. So I'm going to save. Yeah. I've, I've marked some for us to come back to because they're great questions. And for now, I'm going to keep going so we can pop yes. into the play for all design yeah. challenge, because that is going to show you the way hummingbird and bird and um, strawberries can work together towards one specific, an example of a lesson that we both love, and you can see them in action in something that might be used in your classroom. So let's talk about the play for all design challenge. It's centered around a question. Can we design a playground where everyone can play? And having given this question to students a lot, I know that for many students, the answer is, of course, our playground outside. Everyone can play on that. Um, because if you've never seen someone having a barrier to play on your playground, you might think that it's accessible to everyone. And so then you have to dive a little deeper with your students. Well, what if I broke my leg and I was using crutches? Could I play? And they might think a little bit and say, well, not while your leg was broken. You'd have to, you know, sit and play chess or sit and read a book. And then when you didn't have to use crutches anymore, then you could come back. And then you can start challenging students. Well, what if I used crutches all the time? What if my leg wasn't broken? What if that was the way that helped me move? So there are lots of different ways to get students thinking differently um, about who can use playground equipment and who can't. There's no wrong way to get there. But when we're talking about human-centered or compassionate design, whatever you want to call it, 
starting by considering the perspective of someone that is different than you, considering multiple perspectives is the magical place to start. Linked over here is an animated short called Ian. I actually used this when I introduced this unit to eighth graders a few years ago, and it shows a student named Ian who is not able to play on the playground with his friends. And in a powerful, silent, there's no very few, if any, words in this film, shows how it makes Ian feel to not be able to play, to sit and watch, how it impacts his classmates when he realizes that they've when they realize that he can't play, the ways that they can come together. It's a very powerful film and a way to introduce this concept to students. Another way to introduce this concept to students is through is through discussion. Discussion is so powerful to get students thinking creatively. And with something like barriers to access, it may be something that students have been taught they're not supposed to notice and they are not supposed to talk out loud about. So this slideshow, which you can access, we've got the link, we've got the QR code. This is also linked at the end. This is designed to get students talking. It says right here on the first slide, let's talk about it. And we are going right in with language. It'll give them language to use, empower them to ask questions, and model respectful ways to talk and to wonder. So this first slide introduces playgrounds don't always work for everyone. Swing slides, merry-go-rounds, they can be so fun, but what if the equipment made you uncomfortable or unsafe? What if you couldn't walk or climb to reach the best part? Would you still want to play? How would that feel? So let's talk about some of the barriers to play and how we can make playgrounds fun for everyone. Here's a slide talking about mobility barriers. And this language is going to be echoed across each slide. Some people use tools to help them move or stand. This is non-judgmental language, just making an observation really powerful for students to get a model of that language of just noticing. They may use these tools all of the time or some of the time. What would it be like to use these tools at a place? playground. That could be a full day's worth of discussion. What would it be like to move on different types of playgrounds with these kinds of tools? Our next slide talks about equipment barriers. Some people use special equipment to help them do things like breathe, eat, or feel their best. You can consider what it's like to approach a playground using those types of equipment. Some people can have different experiences with their senses too. Some may use tools or extra help to see or hear. Some children might not like loud noises or lots of sun, something that people might not have considered when they're thinking about their playgrounds and any equipment that they might design. There's of course language barriers, reading and speaking words can sometimes be a barrier too. Not everyone speaks the same language or can read signs. Are there other ways to communicate? How could you involve them in your playground prototype? This last slide is just a summary of many other barriers to play. Depending on how deep you want to dive with your students, all of these slides are here for you to use or you're welcome to toss them right out. This slide mentions location and transportation, hours of the park, public restrooms, weather protection, cost of entry, extra equipment, and invites students to think about other things that may be a barrier. Eric, I know when we were talking about this lesson, you mentioned that some of the dolls were too tall for your prototypes. And I thought, I didn't even think about being too tall, too short, too wide. There's all sorts of different ways that bodies can be put together that can make play really easy or more challenging depending on how the equipment is created. So that's those slides are available for you if you would like to use them. And keep in mind that you are more than able to teach this unit without those slides, but they end with the same question. What would a playground for everyone look like? And then you're empowering students. We've noticed a problem in the world. Now, as the people who are going to be, you know, leading us in a few years, how do you want to solve it? What do you want to do? Let's start prototyping. So when you introduce a design challenge as the teacher, as the leader of the challenge, there are a few things you want to consider. What does success look like for your students? You know your group you know your limitations. So if success looks like a 2D prototype that they have drawn and that's enough, great, communicate that to your students. If it looks like something 3D, awesome, as long as they know. If it looks like something 3D that you are bringing to life with motors and sensors, there's no wrong answer as long as your students know what's expected of them. Make sure that everybody knows how long students have to work. If it's multiple class periods, they should know how much time they have, 
what materials they can and cannot use. Limitations can be challenging and also really push students to think creatively as well. What robotics components they need to include if you're looking for a way to challenge your students to incorporate sensors or different types of motors, let them know. And how will they showcase their learning? Who is the intended audience? It might look very different if they are creating a sample playground to show to the local city council than if they are making something for kindergartners that they're going to bring in their favorite stuffed animals to play. So imagine who you're going to be creating it for and let students know so they know who their intended audience is. And we've turned this into a lesson plan for you. So the link is embedded here. We've also got the QR code. And I'm going to take you over just to give you a preview of what this lesson plan looks like and what you'll find here. Your brain might be spinning. You might be thinking, I've got everything I need. I do not need a lesson plan, in which case go for it. But if you're thinking, I'd like to do this, but I really don't know how to get started. I'd like a little more scaffolding. I'd like some more guidance. This lesson plan is for you. If we look over the table of contents, you'll see, let me zoom in a little bit here. Oh, too much. That always happens. You will see that we have an overview and learning goals, a sample schedule. So this lesson is designed to take three periods of class time. You might have more, you might have less. It can be altered and customized to you in any way. We've got teacher prep, the lesson plan itself, a sample solution. Then we've got some standards alignment for you to look through, classroom tips, and then some adaptations, extensions, differentiations, and finally additional information at the end. So this is technically a real world model because we are modeling playground equipment. Students will build a robot in order to showcase their inclusive innovation ideas. We've got total estimated time. Here's our sample schedule. Session one, they learn to code, explain the project, create a plan. Session number two, students will build, decorate, and code. Session three, students present their robots and reflect on their process. On this page, we've got our teacher preparation, everything you need to know and to prepare before your students come in so that you are ready to roll. And then finally, we walk you all the way through lesson one, session two, session three. So this is available for you to download. You can look at it in more detail. I'm looking and seeing that there's some language here that I need to update. So if you are using this lesson plan, you might notice that I'm in there making some changes as you're using it. Don't mind me just trying to make our resources better for you. <laughs> okay. That's very important to have that iterative approach too. We oh, should yeah. practice what we preach in a way. It's lovely. Yeah. So I, I'd love to see what happens when you change it. Mm -hmm. so I would like to be in the document. <laughs> Yeah, and I look forward to changing it based on the feedback that we get. So when our uh, teachers and our beta testers use this, let me know what works, what doesn't work, what you want to see more of. And we will update that lesson so that it's better and better thanks to your feedback because you're the experts and no one is going to be able to create a better lesson than you. Okay, so we made some examples of what we think makes excellent accessible equipment where everyone can play. Um, and we wanna show you what we created. So here is some playground equipment. I'm gonna pause so you can see. This was created with cardboard straws, the hummingbird kit. We've got some swings here. One that's created in order to hold a wheelchair or other mobility equipment. One that's a nice wide seat that people can hold onto or where someone can be supported from behind. And a merry-go-round with lots of space for all different sizes and shapes and people. Now, looking at this, I might look at it and say, is this going to work for everyone? Can I do better? Um, do I feel great about the people that this will work with? I might show it to someone and see what they think. But this is the initial prototype of this is what I think playground equipment could look like. Oh, a great question. Which coding language is used? So with the Hummingbird kit, you can use block-based or text-based programming languages. Hummingbird works with Snap, 
Make Code, uh, Bird Blocks, which is our free app, and Python and Java. So whatever programming language you want to use, you're welcome to use. I believe that these were programmed with Make Code so that they could run even when not attached via Bluetooth. But when it comes to that question, there is no wrong answer. Exactly. And I, it's very similar. We also made everything now in Make Code because we have many more resources there. Uh, but the thing is, once you hit the roof of Make Code, you start wanting to learn any of the text based languages. And then you have glorious amounts of fun learning that too, because that's where the pull system works when you want it. Otherwise, it can be a bit daunting too. But uh, yeah. And I, once again, like we started when I was exploring this, I figured I want to try a bit. And but obviously, it becomes you start out similar to playgrounds but i mean this is why why i show like i'm actually showing like some higher ceiling things that's the first stuff but what we wanted to do was achieve something where it's so actually there's an image missing which i realize now because uh, that seat is my uh, daughter's vision of a, a wheelchair that you take off the wheels and snap it in so you can use all the beams that are on a wheelchair to snap it into structures that move or shake or like all those things so it started with that together with like we had a discussion more than anything so this is high ceiling projects a bit. Let's go on to the next one of the prototypes that's here. So which is, yeah, you can see this is how it started. They made, she made swings for her dolls. This is a messy floor at my home. Uh, and this is, you can see immediately balance starts. They weigh, they all weigh slightly different. They have different lengths. And then she started introducing the soft toys instead. And we had to like make different space for it. And because of the stories, it's just shifting it apart. But then she realized, but now they're not balanced again because you add more stuff. So we came up with these little sliding weights. So all of a sudden the problem comes up and she's too young to do this lesson, but I was there having fun. But the questions came even though she's like too young. She still asked and had fun asking questions and figuring things out. So that's how it started. And she wanted to slide and it needed to be able to, to be able to go for different size toys again. So she had that immediately. How do we do that? I don't know. Can we also change? Because some kids are afraid of the fast slides. Can we make it go slower? So she made one that she could shift, <laughs> just to tilt it up and down. We won't see that. But that you see how the discussion comes and having something that moves and it's easy to change. It comes naturally like, oh, but what happens? How do you make the slide slower? Uh, you try it. You tr she tried it. So that, that, that slide actually slides uh, dolls in plastic, not so good for the other ones. But uh, then we went up classic Ferris wheels. Uh, that's a bit advanced once again, but just to show how you, combine, <laughs> how you combine cardboard. I wouldn't take this as the first okay. project, but looking at this, it's a great okay. first goal okay. to see. We added. We'll also post those gears uh, because you just you can just tape it on to your uh, to the servos the continuous rotation so i made gears just because it's easier for this particular project because once it's balanced it's very easy to uh, to to move those big things uh, and i think that was one of the most interesting things so now i have the solution for balancing and auto balancing but that's it's a bit too high ceiling but it's because you see how it even engages me really hard i'm like oh I want this. You start thinking about all these things and you see the swing. That's also with the motors, even if you're that's one of the solutions that they came up with for. But it, what the problem was, if you don't have the same weight, like when my daughters, they started talking about themselves, it started with with that thing. How can you remove that uh, the weight? You, uh, you make them uh, impervious to it and you animate it anyway. <laughs> So, and then they made a room for the for a kid who can't join to animate and control it from the inside, which I'll show you uh, later also, that they started with the tactile room that's underneath for the kids who were afraid of the sun or didn't want to be out or like feels I, I've had too much. Yeah, you can see that. So they made a really cozy little room under the, the seesaw, the animated seesaw. Uh, and, uh, and there you can see how the rails are snapped in. So these are some simple prototypes there. And uh, do I have, let's see if I had some more. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I did. Yeah, these are examples. Of, so you can see close ups of some of the solutions. I just wanted to connect some of it where you see the combination of hacks and uh, within the cardboard hacks and strawberries. Now it looks like a mess, but that's how it becomes. 
it's it and you should allow it it's very important to be able to be messy and try out solutions so this is what happens when you go scaffolding your way forward adding more and and shifting the weight by adding straws outwards and, and back and, and forth so i just wanted to have this as an example of inspiration of what happens uh, yeah, and, that's part of the process right like there's yeah, a reason I, you can see the top half of my office because the bottom is filled with very purposeful mess <laughs> yeah yeah exactly super purposeful and it,